So, do you and your partner have different levels of sexual desire? Here with advice and a solution to this common dilemma, we welcome back our relationship expert and couples therapist, Megan Meganson is here. Hey, Megan. Hey. So, do you get this a lot in your practice? Not only do I get this a lot, but desire discrepancy in couples is one of the most common issues that brings couples in for counseling. I could understand that that would be an issue that needs to be worked out. Right, yeah. So desire discrepancy is when one partner wants sex more frequently than the other partner. Mm -hmm. uh, so often what it looks like is a couple comes into the office and partner A is the partner who wants sex more frequently. Par partner B is the one who has a lower desire for sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and typically we find that like the finger is pointed at that person, right? Something's wrong with them because they don't want sex as much as their partner. Okay, like maybe something's broken? Or? Like something's broken, right? Okay. I think that's sort of the, the message. If your sex desire is low, mm -hmm. then something is broken or not working in your body. But the truth is, unless there's an underlying medical issue that really is inhibiting your sexual functioning, there's nothing wrong with partners who want sex less frequently than their spouses. Now, what if it's that they want, they just don't desire that particular partner that mm -hmm. often? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Um, but I, I think that a lot of the confusion is really cleared up when partners begin to understand that there are different types of sexual desire. No. Okay, what are these types? Yeah. Yeah, so the first type is called spontaneous sexual desire. And this is the type that we see about in the movies. Um, it's the type that our culture tells us is the right way to feel sexual desire. Okay. 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 So spontaneous desire uh, is when you need no foreplay. You don't really need any incentive in order to have sex. You just see your partner. They're looking good. And you're like, I'm ready to go. Let's have sex right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Right. Um, now, the research shows us that 75% of men have spontaneous desire, but only 15% of women have spontaneous desire. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So if that's the case, so how is it seemingly so um, glorified? Like that's the way that it's supposed right. to go for most people. Yes, um, I think our society plays a huge role in perpetuating this myth. Mm -hmm. Think about when you see a movie and the couple, it's hot and heavy, they're super attracted to each other. It's not as entertaining to do kind of a, a let's work up to having sex, right? <laughs> like, right. let's talk about right. it a couple of days before and right. see what we can do about the kids. That's just not quite as entertaining. Not at all. But rest assured, spontaneous desire is not the only way to experience sexual desire within your body. Okay, so what's the other way? So the other way is called responsive desire. Mm -hmm. And responsive desire is what a majority of women experience. What this means is that we actually need to be in a sexual context, having a sexual experience before we experience any sensation of desire. That, okay, that sounds like a lot. I need you to yes. break that down. So. Yeah. So basically what that means is something sexy has to be happening uh -huh. before I feel like having something sexy happen. Okay. okay. I can get with that. Right. Okay. So it's instead of assuming that I have desire and then the desire propels me to have sex with my partner, mm -hmm. people with responsive desire first have to choose to engage in something sexual. Okay. So we have to tell ourselves, like, you know, I think I'd really like to be intimate with my partner tonight. Okay. Okay. And then you ask yourself, what do I need to do in order to get into the right headspace, into the right physical space, mm -hmm. so that the desire can emerge? So setting the mood. Setting the mood. Okay. Right. And it does help when he does the dishes, right? It does help when he does yeah, the dishes. Yeah, yeah, I think that's an important part in there. Make sure you talk, make sure you yeah. talk to your couples about that. Uh, we talk about that every day. <laughs> and the mail. Get and the, the mail. mail. So I have a helpful analogy that might break this down a little bit, because it can be confusing to understand. Understand, especially when we've believed our entire lives that we should have spontaneous desire. Okay. Responsive desire is a whole new concept. Okay, are you ready? I think so. so this is my favorite analogy about sex. Okay. When it comes to sex, men are like microwaves and women are like ovens. <laughs> yes! Yeah! Right. I can see that. What's that snickering back there? I hear that. I hear that. Right. Uh -huh. So for men, it takes 30 seconds. You pop it in the microwave. <laughs> right? You think about sex. Right. Bam, they're ready to go. Right, right. Okay. So yeah. that's how a majority of men operate. Not okay. all men. Sure. But 75% of them. Okay. Whereas women are like ovens. 
before we're ready to even talk about having sex, we have to preheat. Yeah. And the preheating itself can take 30 to 45 minutes, <laughs> and then the actual cooking of the food is going to take way longer than it does in the microwave. Right. So what okay. do you do during that whole 30 to 45 minutes to keep the microwave uh, from, oh, yes. from beeping. To keep the microwave from, to keep the microwave hot and excited. Yeah. Right. Um, the first question that I really explore with my couples, once we understand that we're dealing with a desire dilemma, mm -hmm. one person is spontaneous, the other person is responsive, is talk to the person, talk to the oven, if you will, okay. about what she needs in order to preheat. Mm, so okay. first we have to figure that out. Does she need more emotional connection? Does she need more physical foreplay? Mm -hmm. Or is what she needs more logistical? Does she need help doing the dishes, taking the trash out, managing the kids? Mm -hmm. Once we have an idea of that, we can really come up with a plan as a couple to better align their different types of desire. Wow. That's and deep. the microwave is usually okay. <laughs> The microwave will be okay with that? The microwave's going to be okay. That's good. Right. That's good to know. So, okay, I, I like, I, that's a really great analogy, by the way. Yeah. I think that that speaks to a number of people. Is there a way to get more spontaneity, mm -hmm. though, at all? Mm -hmm. or, or are you just set as like, right. no, I'm not the spontaneous person, I'm the responsive person. Right. Or can you ever switch it over? Yeah. So it's not something that we can change just by willing it to be different, right? Okay. A, a, an oven can't will itself into being a microwave. Wave, right? There you have so it. You're right. It's so important that we embrace who we are and that we understand that the way we are is normal and healthy and there's nothing that needs to be fixed. Okay. That being said, once both of our needs are being met, often a little more spontaneity will happen naturally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Megan, I think you've helped a lot of people today. I hope so. It's really important information. That was really good. I heard a lot of grumblings back here, so people are really <laughs> the thinking about it. The microwaves aren't so happy The microwaves back there. are like, mm, I don't know, I still like my 30 seconds. That's right. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to have more information on Megan and her tips on our website for you at katu.com. Coming up next, tips on what you need before and after your workout to make it the best it can absolutely be. Hold
now.